Before you dive deeper into this video course, you should begin to embrace the fact that you and any other person who is involved with internet marketing need a list. It is just that simple. You cannot have internet marketing without list building. They go hand in hand. Email lists are extremely vital to the success of a business, and when used properly, they become the heart and soul of your internet marketing efforts. To be perfectly honest, if you do not have a list, you are only hurting yourself. Lists bring money, and without them, you are missing out on many opportunities to make money. However, you may still be questioning why you should invest time into building a list. Well, let's briefly examine some truths about consumer behavior. Research has shown that potential customers may not become conversions through the first encounter with your brand. They may be interested in your products and or services, but sometimes they are unable to finalize their purchasing decision at that exact moment. This could be because they are not ready to purchase due to multiple factors such as 1. Lack of money at time of exposure 2. Lack of product information 3. Trust in the brand you must realize that customers who come into contact with your brand may be in different stages of the sales funnel, and that has an influence on whether or not they purchase. Also, with so many products out there, people are often looking to compare offerings before they take action. However, that does not mean that they are out of the question for a sale in the future. That is, unless you have no way to reach them again. Lists allow you to acquire contact information from these prospective customers. By obtaining this contact information, you are essentially giving yourself a way to stay in touch with the people who have already expressed interests in your company. These people are often only one more interaction away from a sale. Without a list, you are essentially allowing your competition to become more appealing as your prospects continue to browse the internet. You do not want to let your customers get so far away from your product that they ultimately dismiss your offerings when it is time to purchase. A list will give you the opportunity to stay in touch with those who have already expressed an interest in your product, thus allowing you to offer up a friendly follow-up that will help move customers along towards making purchases. Lists also allow you to maintain a relationship with your existing customers. If you are on the mailing list for any company, think about how you personally interact with these brands through their mailing lists. Here are three common things that companies use lists for. One, they sometimes send you specialized offers based on your past purchases. Two, they may remind you to purchase items that you left in your cart. Three, they may ask if you are interested in attending an event. Whatever the case may be, they are keeping the interaction going so that they remain top of mind. And if they do it well enough, you will purchase more items with them. Truth be told, marketing to repeat customers is often the best way that you can drive sales. There is money that you are missing if you have not chosen to implement a marketing strategy that involves using a list. However, if you are watching this part of this video course, you have already taken an important step in ending this detrimental cycle. Now, let us get deeper into how to build a list. There was a point in time where building a list and maintaining it required a great deal of manual work. Before the autoresponder, People who wish to maintain a list were faced with the daunting task of adding contact information, crafting messages, sending messages, etc. Companies would spend so much time maintaining communications with their customers that would take away from other aspects of their business. Thankfully, this is no longer the case. The autoresponder has streamlined this aspect of businesses. When you set out to begin building a list, one of the most important things to have in place is an autoresponder. An autoresponder allows you to acquire, store, and communicate with your leads. Once you capture a lead, your autoresponder will allow you to get the most out of your lists. Before we get into what you should do with an autoresponder, here are some reasons why you should choose a professional autoresponder service. 1. Professional autoresponders offer many benefits. They ensure that your message is deliverable by offering spam filter checks that will alert you if your email is likely to be sent to your customer's spam folder. Overall, it is the goal of the autoresponder service to ensure that your messages have maximized delivery. Without a professional autoresponder, you run the risk of failing to recognize potential errors. 
Two, aside from automatically capturing leads for you, autoresponders will take care of any opt-out, unsubscribe requests, which will free up the time you may have spent trying to do this manually. Three, professional autoresponders frequently back up your lists, which significantly decreases the chance that you will lose your list. After investing time in building your massive list, the last thing you want is to lose your list to something unexpected. 4. As stated before, there are a number of advantages to using a professional autoresponder. If you plan on keeping track of your open rate, opt-out rate, response rate, and things of that sort, which you definitely should be doing to increase the effectiveness of your campaigns, a professional service will provide analytics for those areas. Some of the most popular autoresponder services that are available are Constant Contact, AWeber, MailChimp, Office Autopilot, Infusionsoft, and iContact. The advantage of hosting your own autoresponder is that once you purchase the software, you own the program and you do not have to worry about additional fees. You do not have to pay a company to run this software and you will not incur monthly charges. If you are interested in taking this route, Check out these autoresponders. 1. Interspire. 2. ARP Reach. Ultimately, keep in mind that this option will require more work on your part to ensure that you are maintaining your list. However, this may turn out to be an option for you. When choosing an autoresponder, you should compare services and decide what is best for your situation. Some factors that you should compare are 1. Usability. The interface should be simple enough for you to manage quickly and effectively. 2. Cost of service. Make sure that the cost of the service is one that fits within your budget. Some services may even be free up to a certain amount of emails or may include trial periods. 3. Features. Not all services provide identical features. For example, some give you the option to create your own email templates. Others may be beneficial for split testing. Some may have larger image storage, etc. Whichever route you decide to go with your autoresponder, keep in mind that it is best to research different software and services thoroughly before making a decision. You do not want to lose time trying to transfer a large list to another system later on down the line. Choose the best option for your situation early on to avoid this pitfall. Now that we have discussed how to select an autoresponder, we can move on to setting up an opt-in form. An opt-in form is what you will use to capture your leads. You may have visited a site recently and noticed a pop-up form or even a form that has been strategically placed on the website encouraging visitors to join their mailing list. That form you encountered is the opt-in form. When a user fills out your form and decides to opt-in, they are giving you permission to send emails to them. Some autoresponders will provide what is known as a double opt-in, in which a user will receive a confirmation email to make sure that you have the correct information. If the service you provided gives you the option to use a double opt-in, it is good to use this as it will help you filter out unresponsive customers. By using the opt-in form, you are also complying with the Can Spam Act. There is some confusion about what the Can Spam Act means but all that it does is set guidelines for marketers to send emails in a legitimate manner. The Can Spam Act requires marketers to obtain permission for sending emails from users. It also requires that you provide a way for users to opt in each email that you send. The process for opting out should be easy for the user. One click should allow the user to be removed from your list. Furthermore, you cannot charge a fee for removal from the list and you cannot require them to sign in to remove themselves. That being said, remember that you must respond to opt-out requests immediately. There is a time limit imposed upon marketers for the response to removal requests. Remember the discussion about the difference between autoresponder services and owning your own autoresponder? If you are utilizing a service provider, the Can Spam Act requirements are automatically implemented into your email you will not have to remember to place certain information in your emails, such as your email identifier and opt-out link, and you will not have to remember to remove a user if they opt out, because this will be done automatically by the service provider. A squeeze page is a page that is dedicated to the sole purpose of capturing leads, 
A squeeze page is the wisest option for capturing leads because it eliminates the possibility of a user wandering aimlessly on your site. While designing a squeeze page, remember to provide a layout that is similar to any ads that you may be running. If a person has arrived on your squeeze page from another link, they want to be certain that they are definitely signing up for exactly what they clicked on. If your layout is inconsistent with their expectation, you will certainly drive them away. The squeeze page should have a bulleted list of things that they are going to receive by opting in. This is your time to convince the visitor why they should give you their contact information, so you want to make it good. Here are some tips. 1. Make the headline powerful and personal. If you make the user feel like this is something that will be exclusive to them, they will be more inclined to opt in. 2. Offer something in return for their contact information. Many companies offer some sort of free, relevant content item that entices the user to join the list. 3. The shorter the form, the more likely a user is to opt in. If possible, obtaining a first name and an email is all you need to be effective. Do not make your form longer than necessary. 4. Tell them exactly what to do by providing a strong call-to-action button. 5. Ensure that the opt-in box is above the fold, so that users do not have to scroll or search in order to join your list. Keep it simple at all times. The value of a split test is also present in squeeze pages. It is vital that you create multiple squeeze pages and track their conversion rates in order to see which design works best with customers. You would be surprised to learn how small tweaks in design can impact the overall effectiveness of a squeeze page. If you are not familiar with coding, there are resources to help you overcome that obstacle. Autoresponders offer the ability to design squeeze pages, and in some cases, they also give you the ability to split test. Here are a couple of autoresponders that provide this service. 1. GetResponse 2. Aweber if you are more advanced, you may elect to build a squeeze page yourself without the assistance of an autoresponder. This is perfectly fine, but remember that the same guidelines for design apply. In the previous video, we mentioned that offering some sort of free, relevant content would entice the user to give you their contact information. This is critical. Your customers need to feel like they are going to benefit from giving their personal information so you need to be prepared to give them something in exchange for their information. In this video, we will go over some ways to build your lists. 1. Specific date. Tell your customers that the bonus is only available for a limited time. Specify the date and let them know that the offer won't be there after this time. 2. Running out of time. Tell your subscribers that they only have X amount of minutes to subscribe. Including a timer on the page can help drive conversions even faster. 3. Sneak peek. Tell your subscriber that they will get a free sample of your content if they subscribe. 4. Unbeatable deal. Tell your subscriber that they will get a coupon or discount for one of your products. 5. Republish. Offer the ability to reprint or republish your content if they subscribe. 6. Publish with us. Sometimes you will reach subscribers who want to provide articles and see them published on your site. If you offer this chance for them to contribute, you will see an increase in your list. 7. Achieve goals. Outline the goals that your subscribers will be able to reach with your information. Be sure to emphasize how your information will help them overcome an obstacle. 8. Prizes. People love winning free stuff. Giveaways that are exclusive to your list will incentivize joining your list. 9. Options. Some subscribers may prefer to receive content in different formats. Be sure to give them the option of getting content in different formats to avoid losing subscribers. 10. Influencer. If you have a popular figure that utilizes your product or service, here is your chance to do a little name dropping. People will feel more comfortable providing their information if someone they follow is part of your list. They will oftentimes automatically assume that it must be good if so-and-so is part of it. Note, be sure that the influencer who you choose to highlight is someone that would be relevant to your target market. 
11. It worked for me. Sometimes the best way to convince a customer is to have another customer do the convincing for you. Collecting some testimonials and or endorsements will help build your credibility in the eyes of your subscribers. 12. Bring your friends. Offer up a free bonus for subscribers who are willing to contribute some word-of-mouth marketing. Setting up a tell-a-friend form can be an easy way for you to make some extra subscribers. 13. Waiting list. Tell subscribers that you are only accepting a limited amount of subscribers at the moment, and if you hit your limit, define a number, you will have to place everyone else on a waiting list. This will give them more reason to subscribe right away. 14. Give me feedback. Providing people with an option to give you their opinions will let subscribers know that you value their opinions. Essentially, it makes being part of your list more personal. 15. Free for a limited time. Telling people that you will be charging in the future creates a sense of urgency to act on subscribing now. Be sure to remind your subscribers that you will keep their information private. Remember, this is someone's personal information that they are sharing with you and only you. Do not share or sell your contacts. This will reflect poorly on you as a marketer. In regards to your content, make sure that it is always relevant. If you are a person who specializes in web design, be sure to provide content related to web design. If you offer natural remedies for illnesses, make sure you are providing content that is related to natural remedies. The bottom line is, if a person is signing up to your list, they expect you to keep your content relevant to what they signed up for. At no point in time should your content be totally unrelated to what you pitched in order to get information from the subscriber. You may be aware of people using social media to drive traffic to their list. This is an excellent way to lure people from your social media following into becoming subscribers. You can use call-to-action buttons on your profile that link to your list opt-in form. And you can also design ads that drive traffic to your opt-in form. Do not underestimate the power of social media. Now that you have begun to build your list, you may eventually realize that even though your subscribers share a common interest in your product and or service, they still have different reasons for subscribing. To better understand this situation, it will be beneficial for you to understand market segmentation. Prior to launching your marketing efforts, you more than likely had a type of user that you were trying to reach. This type of person that you had in mind would be interested in your product and or services because it was ultimately relevant to them and their personal situation. This could be fulfilling a need or desire. Whatever the case may be, sub-markets exists within that overall target market. You can segment your lists according to different factors. Here are some examples. 1. By product. Let's say that you promote baby products. You may have several segmentations within that list. There may be people who are interested in baby care items, while there is another list dedicated to furniture. Oftentimes, these lists are generated based on past purchases or browsing activity. 2. By activity. Sometimes it pays to segment your list by grouping people by who has done a similar action. You can create lists around those who have already purchased, repeat customers, those who are potential customers, expressed interests but have not purchased anything yet, or even by those who have placed items in a cart. Also, if you want to go a step further, you can segment by activity on your emails. You can have lists that are as follows. Opened, did not open, clicked, did not click. 3. By location. If you have products that may differ location to location, it may be beneficial to segment lists accordingly. 4. Job seniority level. In certain instances, it may make sense to separate your subscribers according to their occupation. Are you offering informative or educational content? Different levels of seniority will require different levels of content. For instance, if you are providing marketing materials, you may send out one set of material to marketing students and beginners. You may then send out another set of material that caters to managers or those who have intermediate expertise. Then you may send out advanced material to directors. 5. Content Format Remember when we explained the options technique? 
This was the technique in which you provide content in different formats that are appealing to different subscribers. You can even segment your lists by according to how they consume content. For instance, some people may prefer ebooks, while others may like blog posts. The advantage of segmenting your lists is that you are able to send out more personalized, targeted content to those subscribers. The key to increasing engagement is to provide relevant content. By having your lists segmented into smaller groups, you can send out emails that are more valuable to those users. For instance, if you sell instruments, you may have subscribers that have interests in different types. One group may be interested in keyboards, while another may be looking for guitars. By segmenting, you can send out personalized content that will pique the interest of your subscriber. Using the last example, if you send a guitar promotion to someone who plays the keyboard, this email will more than likely be ignored. However, if you send a personalized promotion for deals on keyboards, that subscriber would be driven to open the email as it is relevant to them. Using segments will increase your open rate and eventually lead to more conversions. The key takeaway of this lesson is that you need to figure out which aspects will allow you to personalize your content in order to increase relevancy. Once you uncover which segmentation strategy is relevant to your business, you can group your subscribers and begin planning which content you will send out. Now let's talk about whether you need to use plain text format or HTML format in your emails. There are various advantages and disadvantages in both formats, so you have to pick your choice based on various things, such as demographics, niche selection, type of newsletter, and so on. All in all, whether you choose text or HTML emails, you will not likely get any big difference in your conversion rate as long as you word your emails correctly, focusing on maintaining your audience's interests to keep a good CTR in your emails. Let's highlight some advantages and disadvantages of plain text emails. Advantages of plain text emails. They look simple. They are easy to read. They are good for personalized emails. Disadvantages of plain text emails. Since spammers usually prefer this format, text emails usually go to the junk folder. They look like regular promotional emails. To balance things out, let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of HTML emails. Advantages of HTML emails. Good aesthetics. They make your emails look professional. They are suitable for newsletter type emails. Disadvantages of HTML emails. Difficult to read on mobile devices if the design is not responsive. Difficult to create if you don't know HTML. Now that you know about some advantages and disadvantages of both formats, it's time for you to choose whether to use text or HTML emails in your list building campaign. Please note that it is always better for you to stick with one format once you've picked it, since most subscribers will feel uncomfortable receiving your emails if you keep changing the format of your emails. Do you want to promote digital or physical products? This is the question that you have to answer first, because it's important to determine the format that you will choose for your emails. The key is that digital products such as ebooks or reports are more suitable to be promoted with text emails, while physical products are more suitable to be promoted with HTML emails. The demographics that you are targeting in your promotion matters too. If your target audience is using their mobile devices a lot, then it is better to stick with the format that is mobile-friendly, which is the text format. If they use their PC a lot, then HTML format is more preferable. Note that your target audience has a strong relevance to your selected niche. What is the type of newsletter that you offer? This is also an important consideration. If you are offering a daily, weekly, or monthly newsletter containing the latest information about your niche, then it is better for you to use HTML emails to do that. But if you want to just build a personal conversation with your audience, the text format is the best way to go. This is true if you use your list mainly for promotion, not informing your audience about the latest news. HTML emails are always better to use if you aim to build your brand with your email promotion, because with HTML emails, you can easily place your logo on each newsletter that you send to your audience. Text emails, on the other hand, are suitable for marketers who don't have any company brand to grow, 
and their aim is to just build personal relationships with their audience. It is important to build brand awareness and developing a relationship with your subscriber base, because the more your subscribers trust you, the easier it will be to convert those subscribers into frequent buyers. Every email you send to your list should directly work towards strengthening your brand's recognition for value. This means that you have to be extremely careful with the kinds of products you are promoting, as well as the quality you endorse. Whether you are the creator or not, if you give it your stamp of approval, your subscriber base will hold you accountable if the product or service fail to deliver. You should always analyze each product or offer you are planning to promote so that you will not only stand behind it, but can directly answer any questions that your subscriber may have about the offer. Keep your emails focused and relevant. If you end up venturing into a new niche or interested in exploring other markets, you should start working towards creating an individual segmented list for each niche. The way you structure your email will affect your response rate. If you don't structure your email campaigns properly, your subscribers will quickly lose interest, and you will lose a lot of subscribers as a result. So, structuring your email should be a very important part of your list-building strategy. How should you structure your email? It's pretty simple. A good email structure consists of an introduction, main content, and conclusion, with some call-to-actions being inserted in appropriate places. Here are the keys to a successful promotional email. It should establish a good relationship with your audience. It should offer more valuable information than simply a sales pitch. It should be a quick read, not requiring a lot of time to read. It should flow naturally, making it enjoyable to read. It should persuade your audience to take action, not forcing them. Now let's get into the details of your email structure. The introduction of your email is your only chance to build a good impression with your audience. This is the part where you say hi to your audience, just like when you meet a good friend. This is where you can build an emotional relationship with your audience. Here are the things you should write in your email intro. Addressing your recipient's name, relating your personal story with your audience, giving your audience a hint about the main content of your email. The main content. This is the meat of your content. This is the value that you will give your audience in your email. Everything else is just a filler. This is the reason your audience wants to read your email, so you have to make it great. You have to make it awesome. Here are the things you should write in your main content. Shocking and awesome content that will keep your audience glued to your email. Relevant content with your product promotion. Building your audience's interest toward your product. Conclusion or closing is the part where you say goodbye to your audience. The conclusion or closing statement is the bridge between your email and your main offer. So you can use this part to reinforce the main message that you have given to your audience, as well as to encourage them to take action. Here are the things you should write here. The gist about the main content. Information about your promoted product. Encouragement to check your link. The best place for your call to action is under the conclusion or closing statement of your email. But what you have to understand about the call to action is that it needs to be placed on the parts of your email where it is appropriate. It shouldn't disturb the flow of your email, but rather it should support it. What is a subject line? It is basically your email title. This is the first thing that your audience will see from your email, and they will actually see your subject line before they read your email. If it is attractive, they will read your email. If it's not, they will delete or ignore your message. So, it is very important for you to write subject lines that will make your audience want to read your email. This is not an easy thing to do. Think about the volume of emails that your audience is receiving every day. Will your email stand out and build enough curiosity that will invite them to click on it? In writing your subject lines, the goal should be simple. It is to make your subject lines stand out on your audience's inbox, which should build curiosity for them to read your email. Here are some tips to write attention-grabbing subject lines. Use power words such as amazing, shocking, miracle, easily, and so on. Highlight important words with uppercase letters. Ask a question to your audience. 
create a sense of mystery that can only be answered after reading your email. Remember that the only goal for you in writing subject lines is to make your email recipients to open your email. There is no other goal. You are not promoting your product in your subject lines. You will do the promotion only within the email with your call to action. So don't concern yourself to promote your product yet. Concern yourself only to make your audience pay attention to your email instead of any other emails in their inbox and click on your subject line right away. You need to give your audience a reason to read your email. People will only do something if they have a strong reason to do it. So you have to write your subject line with this knowledge in mind. Write your subject line by offering real value to your audience. Give your audience a glimpse of what they will learn when they open your email. Don't let your audience to procrastinate on reading your email. Make them want to read your email right away by giving a sense of urgency in your subject line. Give some kind of deadline for them to read your email, and then let them know that they will lose an important opportunity if they don't read your email right away. A sense of urgency is known to be a good call to action for any promotion. Most people are tired to read the same old recycled information over and over again. By giving them a glimpse of new knowledge, you will be able to raise their curiosity and make them want to read your email right away. If the information that you offer to your audience is not freely available elsewhere other than your email, you have higher chances that they will read it quickly. As with subject lines, writing a headline for your email is also an important thing to do. There is one thing that you can do to create a strong headline for your email. This important element you will want to include in your headline is at least one psychological trigger. If you're not familiar with the term, it's basically any word or phrase that will compel many people to pay attention or take action. Psychological triggers are useful because they stick out and because they draw in a reader before they have a chance to lose interest. As mentioned earlier, free is a reliable psychological trigger that is frequently used to induce people to try products and join mailing lists. There are also other psychological triggers. For instance, scientifically proven, tested, powerful, explosive, and immediate are all terms that will make your prospects read your headline. So if your current headline seems flat, consider rewriting it to include some psychological triggers. And once you start sending traffic to your opt-in page, consider rotating the triggers to see how they affect your conversion rate. We will talk about tracking and analyzing in the next videos. If you want to keep your subscribers stay on your list, you have to make sure that you can build a good relationship with them. By sending friendly emails to them from time to time, and not just blatant promotions, you will be able to keep your audience interested in your list. The longer you can keep your subscribers on your list, the more chance you will have to convert them into customers. Remember that making your subscribers to purchase your products is not something that can be done instantly. You have to establish trust with your audience first before they are willing to purchase anything from you. Big companies establish trust with their audience with branding. Branding is actually one of the best methods to establish trust with your audience. However, it is a long-term process. You can't establish your brand in just a day or a week. You need years of continuously providing real value to your audience in order to establish your brand. Luckily, branding is not only for big companies. Nowadays, individuals can also establish their own personal branding. If you are a new internet marketer, you might want to establish a personal brand for yourself so that people will recognize you as a trustworthy person. So how can you do this? How can you establish a personal brand for yourself? Again, the process is the same as the big companies. You have to deliver real value to your audience continuously. No matter what products you promote or what niche you are trying to enter, you will surely succeed if you establish your personal brand. This makes your audience to respect you, and it also makes your audience to follow your recommendations. Building your personal brand is a long-term process that will get your audience to trust you and regard you as one of the experts in your niche. So what can you do to achieve it? Before you learn about ways to do it, you have to understand about what you can't do with your list-building campaign. Doing these things will ruin your reputation. 
promoting only your products without providing any valuable content, sending cold messages that don't address your audience personally, never responding to your audience, sending emails at irregular intervals, not delivering on your promises. Now, since you have learned about the things that will ruin your reputation and therefore ruin your personal brand, it's time for you to know about how to build your personal brand effectively. They are actually opposites to the don'ts. Sending emails regularly at regular intervals so that your audience can expect your next email. Providing highly valuable information on each of your emails and over-deliver. Writing personalized messages that will connect with your audience emotionally. Always responding to your audience's responses. What types of content should you write in your emails which will help you to establish your personal brand? Here are some suggestions. Type number one. Send short articles to your list that contain how-to instructions on a particular topic that they will find useful. Type number two. Send out a free 10-page report that contains a specific, focused strategy they can use. Consider including a link to one of your paid products in the report. Type number three. Send out a long ebook and use it to link to dozens of different affiliate products. Type number four. Send some news or updates related to your niche. If there's a new product launch, let them know about it and include an affiliate link, of course. If there's a newsworthy event, also let them know, even if there's no direct profit in it. It'll give them a reason to read your newsletter carefully. Type number five. Periodically review relevant products and include an affiliate link to them in your review. Let's say that you have established your list, and you have hundreds of subscribers on your list by now. You have sent a few emails to your list, and you have seen that some of them are responding positively to your offers. What should you do now? Well, what you should do right now is to add more subscribers to your list and keep on sending valuable emails to them. But most importantly, you have to start tracking your metrics. What does it mean? It means tracking your list building performance to know exactly your success rate. By tracking your metrics, you will be able to know for sure whether your emails have a good response rate or not. In this way, you will not just be measuring your success based on your assumptions, but on the real statistical data that you have from your autoresponder provider. Here are the benefits of tracking your email marketing performance. You know exactly the performance of your campaign based on real data, not assumption. You will know the open rate, conversion rate, subscription rate, and unsubscription rate of your campaign. You can improve your campaign effectively. You can split test your campaign and see which one performs better. Usually, the basic tracking method is available in various email marketing services. For instance, Aweber gives you a good tracking tool to measure the success of your email marketing campaign so you don't need to use any third-party marketing software to track your campaign. It is recommended that you don't track your email marketing campaign when you are still in the earlier stage of your list building journey. For instance, if you still have about 20 subscribers in your list, it's not important for you to track your campaign. Instead, it is more important for you to add more subscribers to your list. Also, you don't need to be too obsessed with the tracking part of your list building campaign. While tracking can give you valuable real-time data, it doesn't determine the success or failure of your email marketing campaign. Tracking will only give you relevant data. The success of your campaign will depend on the way you keep your subscribers interested in your emails. If you want to track your email marketing performance effectively, you should do it with split testing. Split testing can help you to determine which variant of your campaign gives you the best result. You simply run two campaigns at the same time, and you will see which one is better. After finding the better one, you will split test that campaign with another campaign. You do it continuously until you can find a real winner for your campaign. Then you will stick with it for a long time as you add more subscribers to your list. 
it is recommended for any new internet marketers to split test their campaign as quickly as possible once you've reached at least 1,000 subscribers. Aweber is the most popular email marketing service that you can use for your list building campaign. If you plan to use this email marketing service for your list building campaign, you don't need to use any third party tracker software to track your performance. Tracking is incredibly important in the internet marketing world, and fortunately, Aweber does a pretty good job of doing this for us. Aweber keeps track of the number of times your form is displayed and shows you the percentage of conversions that come from that. This is valuable information to have, especially when you are testing multiple forms. It's a good idea to keep a close watch on your list signups and try experimenting with different forms. You'd be surprised what a difference even a small tweak can make sometimes. Aweber also allows you to split test, meaning you can run multiple forms at the same time, and Aweber will rotate between them. You can then compare the conversions side by side to determine which one is the best. For now, you should understand that building a list isn't difficult, but it does require some efforts from your side. You need to actively work on recruiting leads, promoting your squeeze page, and establishing a relationship with your subscribers so that they trust you and the products and services you recommend. You want to use your list to expand your outreach, maximize your income, and become a quality content provider and a recognized authority in your market. So now, the only thing you need to do is take some action.